Welcome to Muslims and Mental Health with Sister Heather, a groundbreaking program looking at mental health issues through the biopsychosocial spiritual paradigm. Welcome to another episode of Muslims and Mental Health. Today we are going to be discussing domestic violence in the family. As you know, October is the Awareness Month for Domestic Violence. And let's just talk about some of the facts that we know about domestic violence. On average, 20 people per minute are victims of rape, physical violence, or stalking by an intimate partner in the United States. Over the course of the year, that equals more than 10 million men and women. Approximately 45 million of these uh, all U.S. adults admit that they have been a victim of domestic violence. More than one-fourth of those applying uh, for assistance are victims of domestic violence for social welfare assistance. On a typical day, there are more than 20,000 phone calls to domestic violence hotlines nationwide. One in 15 children are exposed to intimate partner violence each year, and 90% of these children are witnesses to this violence. The cost of domestic violence exceeds $8.3 billion each year in the United States. One in five women is the victim of severe physical violence by an intimate partner, and women 18 to 24 years of age are at the greatest risk of intimate partner violence. And so I, I say these just to give you a sense of how severe um, domestic violence is in our, in our society. And we know that it reaches into all areas of the community, including the Muslim community. And although there are many times that there uh, is debate about what is domestic violence in the Muslim community, um, I think it's a discussion worth having. So sometimes people who have issue with the Muslim community will cite um, that a man can lightly hit his wife uh, in Islam, but many times when this is discussed, it goes without real understanding. And I'm not going to be discussing that with you today, but I will talk to you about um, what... I think is more apt the case in terms of looking at domestic violence within the Muslim community. And I think that one story we have in Islam that so aptly uh, iterates the meaning behind um, what people understand to be a garment. So in the Quran, we, you know, Allah talks about how men and women are garments for each other. And so you can understand that in a couple of different ways. So some people, the people who are advocating that there is, you know, domestic violence within Islam um, would probably understand the garment to be something you can buy, something you can own, and so that you, you know, have, you can do whatever you want to with it. But realistically, you know, the Quran is actually referring to something else, and we can see this best iterated in the story of Joseph or Yusuf in Islam, in the, in the Quran, in Islam. Um, because we see how garments are actually used and as a protection. Uh, so if we look at the story of Yusuf, we see that he went through many trials, of course, and one of them was uh, that his siblings were very jealous of him. So what did they do? They took his garment and they put his blood on it to try to convince their father that he was dead. And then in another case... Um, but it actually turned out to be a protection for him, right? In another case, uh, Yusuf was being tried, uh, a woman was trying to seduce him. We know from um, recollections that the that Prophet Yusuf was a very attractive and handsome man. And so this woman was trying to seduce him. And the proof came that she ripped his shirt from the back. So the, the idea was that, well, if his shirt was taken off from the front, then that would be proof that maybe he did something wrong, but his shirt was ripped off his back from the back, which proved that the woman was actually the one in error. And so the point being that the garment was a protection for him. And so when we understand the idea of garments in the Quran, you know, that a man and women are garments for each other is to protect each other. It's not to violate each other. It's not to be violent toward each other. It's to protect each other. And I think that story really iterates exactly what we are to understand about what a garment is and how we are to protect one another in Islam, not violate each other. 
So let's look a little bit more closely at the issue of domestic violence. Domestic abuse is also known as spousal abuse, and it occurs when one person in an intimate relationship or marriage tries to dominate and control another person. Domestic abuse that includes physical violence is called domestic violence. Domestic violence and abuse are used for one purpose and one purpose only, which is to gain, maintain uh, control over another person. An abuser doesn't, quote, you know, play fair. Abusers use fear, they use guilt, they use shame and intimidation to wear people down and keep you under their thumb. Your abuser may also threaten you, hurt you, or hurt those around you. So it doesn't just sort of stay contained, it actually has tentacles that affect the people around. So that's why we see it affecting the whole family. Uh, it never actually just affects the two people that may be involved in the violence. It also does not discriminate. Um, it happens in all types of couples, whether they be heterosexual or homosexual. Um, they, domestic violence occurs across the spectrum of relationships in the community. It, it occurs with all age ranges, ethnic backgrounds, economic levels. Um, and while women are more commonly victimized, men are victimized as well, and we will be discussing that in a later episode because there are some slight differences to those. Um, the bottom line though is that abusive behavior is never acceptable. And whether it's coming from a man, a woman, a teenager, or an adult, um, everyone should feel that they deserve protection and to be safe. So part of um, treating domestic violence is being able to recognize it. So how do we recognize uh, domestic violence? So some of the signs of abuse um, is like the most telling one is fear in your partner, right? If you feel like you have to walk around on eggshells or you are constantly watching what you say or what you do because you're afraid that the person's going to blow up at you, chances are that you're in a, definitely in a healthy relationship, but you might also be in a domestic violence relationship. Other signs that you're in an abusive relationship um, would include things like if your partner's belittling you with their language, um, you feel helpless, you feel despair, you feel isolated. Uh, sometimes these can also be an indication that you might be in an abusive relationship. So let's talk about how you can evaluate this for yourself. So think about your inner thoughts and feelings. Here are some questions that you should ask yourself. Do you feel afraid of your partner most of the time? Do you avoid certain topics out of fear that your partner will be angry? Do you believe that you deserve to be hurt or mistreated? Do you wonder if you're the one who's crazy? Do you feel emotionally numb or helpless? So that would be some questions to ask you about your inner thoughts and feelings. And now let's look at your partner's um, behavior. So if we look at, for example, the verbal behavior, that would be a sign that you need to take note of. You might ask yourself, does your partner humiliate you or yell at you? Does, do they criticize and put you down all the time? Do they treat you so badly that you're embarrassed for your friends and family to see? Um, so are their actions in such a way that you wouldn't want anyone else to see them? That's a big red flag right there. Do um, they ignore or put down your accomplishments? Or do they ignore what you have to say about things? Do they, they not embrace your opinions? Um, that doesn't mean they have to agree with them, but they at least, you know, hear them out. If they don't do that, you know, that's something to take note of. Do they blame you for their own behavior? So are they always saying that something is your fault instead of taking ownership of it themselves? Do they see you as property, a sex object, or um, something other than a person? And you would notice this probably as well in your intimate relationship, um, depending on how... Um, open they are to understanding what's important to you. So let's look at another area, which is your partner's uh, violent behavior or threats. So how would you know that you're falling into domestic violence from that? Well, does your partner have an unpredictable temper? Do they hurt you? Do they threaten you? Do they threaten to kill you? Um, do they threaten to take your children away from you or harm them? Do they threaten to commit suicide or, or leave you? Um, do they force you to have sex or do they destroy your belongings? All of these are red flags that you need to pay attention to. And if any of those are going on, you should be seeking help. 
Um, and then let's look at the controlling behaviors. What, are that, what does that look like? Do they act excessively jealous or possessive? Do they try to control where you go and what you do? Do they keep you from seeing your, families, uh, your family and your family friends? So that would be the idea of isolating you. Do you feel like you're isolated all the time? Do they limit access to money or the phone or the car so an, or, or any other means of communication? Are they trying to limit your communication with the outside world? Um, and do they constantly check up on you? Like, are they going through your wallet, through your computer, through your phone, um, through your car? Uh, all of these things would be signs that the person is overstepping boundaries at the very least. And at the most, it could be headed toward a domestic violence situation. Sexual abuse is also a form of physical abuse. So to give you a better idea about sexual abuse, any situation in which you are forced to participate in an unwanted, unsafe, or degrading sexual activity is sexual abuse. Forced sex, even by a spouse or an intimate partner with whom you've had consensual sex is an act of aggression and violence. Furthermore, people whose partners abuse them physically and sexually are at a higher risk of being seriously injured or killed. And so when you're trying to parse out, well, is this abuse or not? Well, think of it this way. It, it is abuse if the, if the incidents of physical abuse seem minor when compared to those you've read about or seen on television. So when you get into that comparing game, is it better or worse? Maybe mine's not real because it's not as bad as that. Well, it doesn't have to be as bad as that to still be domestic violence, to still be inappropriate. The incidents of physical abuse have only occurred one or two times in the relationship. Well, that's, you know, something that people dismiss then that they have had a DV situation because studies indicate that your spouse or partner has, if they've injured you once, they will continue to assault you. So if somebody has this type of behavior without addressing it, without getting help, it is likely to continue. There's not um, a whole lot you will be able to do for that person, with that person to make them stop. Um, the physical assault stopped when you became passive. And so some people think, and, and they talk about, well, if the wife was just more submissive, the husband wouldn't act this way. But in fact, we know that's not the case um, because it's not a victory that you give up your rights as a person in exchange for being assaulted. In fact, that's actually oppressive. And we know in Islam that we are not allowed to uh, oppress ourselves. And if we are in an oppressive state and we have the ability to get out of it, we are supposed to get out of that state. And there's not been any physical violence, so therefore I'm not being abused. Well, many women are emotionally and verbally assaulted without being physically abused. Uh, men are quite aware that they can be arrested for physical violence, and those who are smart enough to know that uh, but are still abusive will resort to for verbal and um, emotional abuse. And this can be as equally frightening um, and devastating as the physical abuse uh, because as many um, people have iterated to me, they when you have a physical wound, that wound you can actually see it healing and resolve over time. But when you have an emotional or um, verbal scarring, it's often hard to ever see whether that actually heals up. So let's look at emotional abuse uh, quickly. When people think of domestic abuse, they often picture a battered woman who, uh, who has been physically assaulted. But not all abusive relationships, as I mentioned before, include violence. Just because you're not battered or bruised doesn't mean you're not being abused. Many men and women suffer from emotional abuse, which is no less destructive. And unfortunately, emotional abuse is often minimized, overlooked, and um, even by the person being abused. So how can we understand uh, emotional abuse? Well, some of the things that fall under this category would be yelling, name-calling, blaming, shaming, isolation, intimidation, controlling behavior. Um, and one of those controlling behaviors could be economical or financial abuse. And what does that look like? Well, that would look like somebody rigidly controlling your finances, withholding money or credit cards from you, making you account for every penny you spend, withholding basic necessities like food, clothes, shelter, uh, restricting you to an allowance, 
preventing you from working or choosing, you know, your own occupation, um, sabotaging your job, like making you miss work or calling constantly to get you fired. So to make it put barriers in the, your way for your, your position, like taking your car, for example, um, stealing from you or taking your money uh, is another form of e economic or financial abuse. So when we look at this in the big picture, what the abusers tend to use are a variety of tactics to control and to have power. And so what do these look like? They look like dominance, humiliation, isolation, threats, intimidation, denial, and blame. What can you do about this? Well, we have an organization called Muslim Men Against Domestic Violence, which you can reach out to. They are on the web at mmada.org. That's one organization. There's another organization called the Sakina Project within the Muslim community. Outside the Muslim community, there is a domestic uh, abuse hotline that you can call, which we will have uh, listed on our website at nefshealertherapy.wordpress.com. And the very last thing I want to talk about in regards to domestic violence awareness is understanding that domestic violence can be a cycle. So you're looking at a cycle. And what does that cycle look like? Well, it starts with the abuse. And then there's guilt after the abuse. There are excuses made for the abuse. Then the, you know, there's some normal behavior where things seem okay again. And then there gets even to the level of a fantasy, like, oh, everything is going to be great from now on and we're great. Um, and then you get set up again. The, the issues, the triggers that were there before that created the violence come back and you start, you get abused again. And this cycle just keeps repeating itself until something disrupts that cycle. So if you are a friend or family member who is suspecting that someone might be a victim of domestic violence, some of the general warning signs of, signs of that would be that the person seems afraid or anxious um, to please their partner all the time. They go along with everything their partner says and does. They check in often with their partner and report what they are doing. Um, they receive frequent harassing phone calls from their partner, uh, or they talk about their partner's temper, jealousy, or possessiveness. Some of the warning signs of the physical violence could be that you see that they have bruises or they're having frequent uh, injuries, which they call accidents. They miss work, school, or special occasions in the family. Uh, they dress in clothing that would hide their bruises and scars. And um, the warning signs of isolation would be that they're restricted from seeing family members and friends, that they rarely go out in public with their partner, and they have limited access to money and so forth. Um, and then lastly, the psychological warnings would be that they have very low self-esteem. Um, even if they used to be confident, like suddenly now they, they're not, uh, they show more major personality changes. Like, so they may have been outgoing before and now they're withdrawn or they don't go out at all. Uh, they could be depressed, anxious, or suicidal. So the important thing is if you uh, know someone who's a victim of domestic violence or you think you're a victim yourself, you should break the silence, speak up, speak out, and don't let the violence continue. I hope this awareness has been helpful today. And this concludes another episode of Muslims and Mental Health. Please give us your feedback, comments, or concerns at nafshealertherapy at gmail.com. That's N-A-F-S-H-E-A-L-E-R therapy at gmail.com. And please uh, join our site at nafshealertherapy.wordpress.com. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24 hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1 888 242 44 a lot of time we don't even know what's wrong with us and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, 
which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you.